Ja sam to počeo istraživati prije raspada Jugoslavije. Znači, to je trajalo dobrih 15-20 godina. 1980. godine prvi put smo čuli za Herceg Petra Todića. Mi ništa nismo znali za njegovu sudbinu. To je ko grom iz vedra neba je puka kad smo saznali. Ali ključni ljudi u tomu su bili, naglašavam, pokojni Terović i admiral Robert Lani. Njega je zaintrigirala priča o Piteru Tomiću kao junaku Pearl Harbour-a. On je zašao iz engine room gori, onda je vratio se po svoj mornare ko su bili ranjeni i se njih nosili do gori. Onda su rekli ga, na moje ći bešeri. On je rekao, ja hoću. To će sve eksplodirati. I Bidan je tišao drugi put doli i sve je pokao. Brod na kojemu je Peter Tomić služio je bio građan nešto prije Prvo svjetskog rata. Imao je parno turminsko postrojenje, što znači da je propeler, propeleri su bili pokretani sa četiri Parsonsove turbine koje su bile napajane sa parom iz 12 kotlova koji su bile loženi na ugljen. It was on December 7, 1941 when the Japanese fleet attacked Pearl Harbor. They were very successful in sinking any number of the battleships and the cruises and other ships in the harbor, including the USS Utah. This ship was tied up at Ford Island Uh, on December 7, 1941. And uh, uh, Peter Tomic had been serving on this ship maybe four or five years. Kako on bio očito vrlo sposoban, vrlo inteligentan čovjek, on je od običnog mazača, bez škole, bez ničega, vrlo brzo došao do upravitelja stroja, što je bez vojne akademije, bez škola, bez svega, bilo vrlo neobično za tadašnje vojne kriterije američke vojske. U ono vrijeme sve što se radilo moralo se raditi ručno. Tako da je sama posada takvih brodova bila veoma brojna, a drugo sam rad je bio poprilično zahtjevan jer u strojarnicama su bile iznimno visoke temperature, tako da je psihofizički napor tih ljudi bio veoma velik. Iseljavanje iz Uvrškog kraja počelo je konce 19. stoljeća, a iseljavalo se iz egzidencijalnih razloga, iz ekonomskih razloga. Ljudi su iseljavali doslovno da bi preživljali, da bi mogli odhaniti sebe i svoju obitelj. Od kraja 19. stoljeća do Prvog svjetskog rata iselilo je pola miliona Hrvata, najviše u Sjedinjene američke države. U pravilu su odlazili muškarci u srednjoj ili mlađoj životnoj dobi, tamo između 19 godina i 30. najčešće. Supruge njihove uglavnom nisu odlazile, osim kasije u pojedinačnim slučajima kad su oni već jedno vrijeme tamo boravili, živjeli dok su se snašli. Najstarija emigracija je bila u Kaliforniji. Polovinom 19. stoljeća naši 
pomorci iz Dalmacije, Dalmatinci, išli su u Kaliforniju. Tamo su u to vrijeme i osnivana hrvatska društva pod nazivom Slavonik. Dobito se radili najteže poslove, sjeća šuma, rad u rudnicima, na željenskim prugama i tako. Redovito te steže posebe su bili ljudi nepismeni i bez određenih kvalifikacija. On je ošao vrlo mlad u svoje 20. godine. U Sinjehabičke države kao drugi Hrvati trebu poznati kruho. On je se ženija sa svojom suprugom u radnicu, on nije živio niti dva, tri mjeseca. Ali je obećao da će je prihvat, oni pribaviti u Sinjehabičke države. Bez ikve ispravo došao tamo i on se javio tomu svomu Bratiću, on ga je primio, ali ga je upisao pod tim obiteljskim mladinkom, a ne pod pravim prezimenom. Zato da ne bi možda odgovarao za nešto, jel? On je bio sa srznanjima jako živa osoba. Nije bio velikog rasta, ali je bio pune energije i snage. Ima jedan drugačiji duh, nije tijer rad tamo, recimo u firmi, i ne jednom bausteli, on je volio malo i kockat u jednom manjeru svoje društvo, jel, nek takav ti je bija u vagonu. I taj vagon je zgorija i normalno vagon se morao je platiti. I možda je to jedan od razloga da bi išao u američku vojsku. Onda kje računao odlazak u američku vojsku je, nakon što služite toliko godina, dobivate papire američke. I on je to i napravio. Peter Tomic had enlisted in the United States Army in the outbreak of World War I. So he served from 1917 to 1919 in the United States Army, and during that period of time, he became an American citizen. And when he was released from the Army in January 1919, within 10 days, he joined the United States Navy. When he came to the United States Navy, he was able to write two letters. And it was everything in contact with him. Od njegove supruge i pokonu do Petra. I poče je prvi svjetski rat i tada je prestala više komunikacija i među njih dvoje. Učešće Hrvata u oružanim snagama Amerike ima i dugu tradiciju. U prvom svjetskom ratu na zapadnom ratištu Bili su odlikovani tri Hrvata, to su bili Luj Čukela, James Meštrović i Matej Kocak. Reviewing the personnel record of Peter Tomic, it is interesting to note that he enlisted in the United States Navy in Newark, New Jersey on January 23rd, 1919. He signed his name as Peter Tonich, T-O-N-I-C-H, and was enlisted as a fireman, third class. The answer is why he came to the United States when he came to the United States and changed his name from Herceg to Tonich, that is, Tonich. His occupation, as listed in the enlistment papers, was private United States Army. His citizenship was noted as naturalized United States, and his place of birth was Austria, with a date of birth of June 3rd, 1893. And he indicates a home address in Los Angeles, California. In all our countries, if one family has more families, then it would be different from each other. Then they would take the hopes. In fact, they would take the hopes that they would take the hopes po djedu ili po baki, da se razlikuju jedne od drugih. Tako jer u nas ovdje ima mali milijunke pod navnicima Hercega, onda su oni svako nekoliko obitelji su imali poseban nadimak. I tako je jedna obitelj šira imala i to nadimak Tonić. Also notes that he was 25 years old and 7 months and a height of five feet, seven and one-eighth inches, a weight of 138 pounds with blue eyes, a light colored hair, a ruddy complexion, and white color. And it's signed again at the bottom, Peter Tonich. And indeed, I came across 
a note in, in the, his personnel record that uh, in uh, June 1937, he was absent without leave for 10 days, 18 hours. And perhaps he was ashore enjoying himself and missed the ship, which uh, uh, is not totally unusual in, in the Navy. He did catch up to his ship. This was his family. This was his home. But uh, as we do in the Navy, he was disciplined. And his sentence was to lose $78 per month of his pay for a period of six months. Total loss of pay amounted to $468. December 7th, 1941, the uh, Empire of Japan and the first air fleet launched an air attack on Pearl Harbor. It was two waves of aircraft. The first wave, 187 aircraft, arrived here and started the attack at 755. Peter Tomich was a chief water tender on the former battleship Utah, which was at the time of the attack on Pearl Harbor on 7 December 1941, was used as a target ship. The Japanese had nine aircraft that they had planned for this side of the island, torpedo aircraft. The three of those aircraft launched their torpedoes at the USS Utah. Uh, but she was hit by two torpedoes uh, very early uh, in the Japanese attack. So the ship very quickly developed a severe list. She began to list um, most of the crew members. You had about 300 or so that were on board. Most of them were able to get off of the ship. The senior officer on the ship knew would cause the ship to capsize, uh, and he gave the order to abandon ship. These boilers are going in a ship like that. If those boilers come in contact with the water, you can have a huge explosion. Uh, Peter Tomich was actually topside. He could have just abandoned ship, uh, but he didn't do that. Because those boilers were his uh, responsibility. You know, he took that very, very seriously. He went back into the ship, into the engineering and boiler spaces where the men and the equipment that he was responsible were. Uh, and he made sure that all of his men got out. He went back down and he made sure that those boilers were all closed up and also that the ship was continuing to get power so that they the crew members that were on board could get off, that they didn't have complete darkness in the ship. You can't just flip a switch. It's very complicated. Uh, and if you don't do it right, or you don't do it at all, you risk a catastrophic explosion within the ship that would not only have killed the people in the engineering spaces, but killed many people around. He was going down the ladder as other sailors are coming up. So people know that he has gone down there and he's telling everybody to get out, get out, as he goes back down into the, to the boiler room. And he'd been a sailor for 20 years in the Navy, so his reputation was well known, his character was well known. So it was, there were eyewitness accounts of sailors that had gotten off the Utah, as I said, probably talking about how, as they're coming off the ship, here's Tomich going back down into the boiler room. Later on, I interviewed a survivor of that ship who told me that Peter Tomich went down below as the ship started to capsize. And by 812, the ship had completely capsized. But Peter Tomich remained on watch down below, trying to clear the spaces and save his men. Because he gave his life, uh, because he sacrificed his own life, and the results of the sacrifice of his own life led to, this, to the saving of so many different sailors. That's why it was deemed he was worthy of the Medal of Honor. The 
President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Congressional Medal of Honor posthumously to Peter Tomich, Chief Water Tender, United States Navy, deceased. Although realizing that the ship was capsizing as a result of enemy bombing and torpedoing, he remained at his post in the engineering plant of the USS Utah until he saw that all boilers were secured and all fire room personnel had left their stations, and by so doing, he lost his own life, and this is signed F.D. Roosevelt, the President of the United States. Well, let me first show you a Medal of Honor. This is the Medal of Honor. It's worn around your neck. This one happens to be an Army Medal, and there is one for the Marine Corps Navy, and there's one for the Air Force, and those are the three. Uh, it is the highest decoration our country gives for valor in combat. Fifteen Medal of Honor recipients uh, during the attack on Pearl Harbor, awarded during the attack on Pearl Harbor. Four of those were on the USS California, two of those were on the uh, USS Nevada, and then you also had the one here on, uh, for Peter Tomich on the USS Utah. Within the United States, uh, someone who is awarded a Medal of Honor uh, is considered in very high regard. Uh, there are very few of them considered to be very special. Uh, it takes an uh, uh, unusual amount of courage uh, in order to do what they did. Um, and so they're, they're held in, in very high esteem. As soon as I put the medal on, or people knew that I was a Medal of Honor recipient, the treatment changed to one of respect and courtesy. So, by and large, the medal gives you special treatment. Peter Tomich was decided that he would be awarded the Medal of Honor. Um, they tried to find his next of kin, but his records, the only record he had was of a brother who had come over to the United States with him back in 1913. Well, we later learned through the family that uh, his next of, next of kin and beneficiary, uh, Ivan or Ivan Tomich, had gone back to what was then Yugoslavia in the 20s. So when the Navy was trying to locate the, the so-called next of kin, the letters were being returned. Jedna od kočnica, sigurna, sto posotna, dokazana, je bila bivša jugoslavinska vlast. Svaki odgovor jugoslavinske vlasti je bio da to ime nije pronađeno u nikakvom spisku jugoslavinskih državljana i da on nije jugoslavinski državljan. Amerikanci su znali da je to iz ovoga kraja. Ale jugoslavenske vlasti nisu uopće bile zainteresirane za toga junaka Petra Tonića, jer su doznali da je Hrvat. I tada su počeli dolaziti novinari iz oslobođenja iz Sarajeva i slobodne Dalmaci. Išli su na humac i tražili su podatke o tačnosti njegova identiteta i rođenja. I bilo određeni problema i od komiteta iz Mostara, Ljubuškoga i pritiski su veliki bili pršeni s obzira na prošlost moga oca. Htili su kod oca da moj otac potpiše puno moć, savjeznu izvršnu vijeću, međutim, otac to nije želio prihvatiti. Jer mi smo živjeli u jednom sistemu koji je bio proti Hrvatski. Za mnoge Hrvate i to bi za nas bilo podiženje. Moj otac je to glatko odnio. I on je se zahvalio i od tada je nekako to istalo. Pitera Tomića su čak svojatelji američki Srbi, kao da je to njihov heroj. A usput još da vam kažem, jedan Hrvat koji se zove Vjekoslav Lujić Ukela u Prvom svjetskom ratu dobio je čak dvije medalje časti, najvišeg vojnog američkog odlikovanja. 
Louis Čukel je pokopan na američkom groblju Arlingtonu u Washingtonu, ali što je najvažnije, treba spomenuti da se na tom groblju nalaze grobovi još dvojice američkih Hrvata koji su dobili medalju časti. To su John Joseph Tominac i Michael Novosel koji su dobili za vojne zasluge u Korejskoj i Vijetnamskoj ratu. Interesantno je da je poznati pokojni, sada pokojni američki Hrvat Adam Eterović od 3,5 tisuće dobitnika medalje časti. Čak 22 medalje časti su dodijeljene američkim Hrvatima. Zanimljivo je da je jedan od rijetkih živućih nositelja medalje časti, Paul Bad Buha, pod rijetlom iz Našica, on je u doba kad je admiral Lani počeo istraživati slučaj Tomića, bio predsjednik društva nositelja medalje časti, tako da je on isto jedan živi svjedok doprinosa američkih Hrvata američkim vojnim pobjedama. So they didn't have an extra kin, so what do you do with this medal? So what they did is they uh, commissioned a destroyer, the Tomic, named after him, and then they presented the medal to that destroyer, and it stayed on the destroyer during the war and then thereafter. 48, when that destroyer was decommissioned, the medal ended up going to the state of Utah. So the state of Utah had it for many, many years. And then eventually there was a training school in Rhode Island that was established with Tomic Hall was the main hall in that school, and the medal went to that school. Uh, as Chief Petty Officers of the United States Navy, uh, one of our prideful moments is uh, history and heritage. So every building on board Naval Station Newport has a, a name and a lineage behind it. And a Chief Petty Officer really stands out to mind for history for us as Chiefs is Chief Water Tender Peter Tomic. And we wanted to memorize him uh, and give him credit for what he has done back in 1941 by naming his building after him. There is pieces from the USS Utah in the building that we like to remind students this is here for us to remember what happened that day, what chiefs are about, what we do every day, and try to think about how can we be more like Peter Tomic. I think it's important that for younger generations, uh, especially those in the military, to have an example of those who have placed a duty and country above themselves which was a case of, of Peter Thomas. His biography is in our student handbook. Uh, every student needs to read that before they come here, a lot of information, but in the very front pages it talks about the USS Utah and who Peter Thomas was, what happened on those events that day. And then uh, here we do have an award for the top graduate. Uh, it is handpicked by the class who they feel best epitomed uh, the sacrifice Peter Thomas did that day. Uh, and that graduate gets the Peter Tomich Award. He will be my boss. I'll have a different boss. So what difference does it make what I say to him? Or it could happen, but I'm in a different situation. It could look different. All, all these kinds of possibilities. But inside, he knew the answer that was an answer of integrity was, yes, I would do it again, boss. So what did he do? He looked the battalion commander in the eye and he said, Sir, I've got to tell you, if I was faced with that same situation, I would do the same thing I did last night. Well, we tell the story of the United States Navy from all the way back to the beginning. Uh, and there have been quite a few uh, sailors who have been awarded the Medal of Honor over the years. Uh, the criteria has changed over time. Uh, it's much more restrictive now than it was, for example, during the Civil War, uh, but it required an extremely high degree of heroism 
uh, at great risk to someone's own life uh, in order to be considered for a Medal of Honor. Uh, so throughout the museum, you will see examples of, of sailors and officers who have uh, displayed that level of courage. Uh, and we do have a, a small electronic display where visitors can uh, look up uh, any Medal of Honor winner from any service, including the United States Navy. Tomich Medal eventually ended up with a relative, but spent many years in very honored places in the U.S. Navy until a proper relative was found. Sve meni u životu nekako počime sa umjetnošću, moj slikama, pa je tako i ta priča počela s time. Negdje, mislim, 1993. godine, ja sam imao izložbu u New Yorku. Na tu izložbu je došao penzionirani američki admiral Robert Lani i kupio jednu moju sliku. I došao je do vrijeme kad sam on je htio da ja tu sliku osobno donesem u njegovu kuću, da mu pomognem gdje će on ju staviti. Onda je Robert Lani počeo svoju priču. A notice in the Navy Times, which is a commercial publication, about this Medal of Honor award to a Croatian American that had never been presented. Admiral Lani je čuo za tu priču i počeo istraživati i tako sam ja čula zapravo od njega. Postao je zainteresiran za Hrvatsku. This was wrong to retain this medal, as I found out. The Navy loved to have it in a glass and closed case in a museum or in a, in a school or in the Salt Lake City, uh, Utah, etc. And they resisted every effort in, in, in trying to locate his next of kin other than writing letters or responding to people who thought they may have been related to Tomlich, etc. And this is what inspired me to do the right thing to justify a true cause, that is, to have a medal presented to the next of kin rather than having it placed behind the glass in a museum. Američka vojska imala jedini podatak da je on došao i postavio zahtjev za ulazak u vojsku u Los Angelesu i San Francisco, nisam sigurno, ali tu u Kaliforniji, Kaliforniji. Ja sam se obratio tadašnjem župniku u Los Angeles, ispričam mu priču i nakon puno mjeseci traženja on je pronašao Petar Tomić. Ja radim sa jedan admiral, vojna admiral, Moranar. On je jako dobar čovjek, amerikanac, i on pomogne puno. Through a journalist who gave me a contact, it was Adam Materovic, who was the president of the Croatian Genealogical Society in San Carlos, California, and he provided me with some background, some documentation as to who Peter Tomic really was. Tu se uključilo jako puno ljudi, pogotovo novina Krsnike, Terović i pokrenio se cijeli jedan sustav koji je surađivao sa sa gospodinom Lanijem. I talked to another friend of mine who was the president of the Congressional Medal of Honor Society, um, Paul Buka, who happened to be of Croatian background himself and was very curious about my interests, but he was very helpful, sent me a letter and said, this was one of the few medals, if not the only medal, uh, uh, that was awarded to a Navy hero that had never been delivered to his next of kin. So my friends and I decided, well, if I'm going to Croatia, to look into this and to investigate it. Međutim, ovaj podatak da je on rodom iz prologa je bio jako presudan. Tako je meni došao u posjetu gospodin Lani, sa svojim sinom i otišli smo u prolog. Tomić Petra Hrvatski junače! U 
ovako su neka izgledale kuće kad je rođen Herceg Petar Turić. Oni su prilike izgrađene 1850. godine. Kad smo išli u prolog, u samostan, istraživati crkvene papire, ja sam bila prevodioc zapravo tamo između svećenika i gospodina Lanija. Zahvaljujući ovomu našem pokojnom Fravinku Dragiseviću, koji je poznavao i te obitelji sve, ovdje ima uvid u naše matice, krštani i vjenčani, on je to odgonetnio i kad je rođen i kad je vjenčan, sve to skupad. There we met the abbot of the monastery, and he opened up all of the books and the records and the papers and documents, and the dust was flying off these huge volumes. Evo, ovo vam je treći svezak Matce Kršćeni, Žulpe Svetog Ante na Kumsu od 1885. do 1893. U njoj je upisano krštenje našega Petra Ercega, zvanog Tonića, koji je u Americi završio kao junak ratne mornarice pod imenom Petar Tomić. You can appreciate that the Franciscans have all of these records down through the centuries and have survived not only the Ottoman, and the Turkish occupation, but the German and communist uh, occupation and forces, etc. Tamo su fate bili iznimno ljubazni, izvadili su svu arhivu, prsikali su se svi dokumenti, a čak smo dobili i obiteljsku predaju u jednom malom selu i se uvijek moraju poštovati obiteljske predaje potomaka. Tamo su stavi ljudi znali da je on otišao u Ameriku. Ovdje u ovoj matci krštani koja je pisana na latinskom jeziku piše pod brojem 799 pod prolog dana 2. srpnja 1893. rođenog 28. lipnja fra Leonardo Radoš krstio je Petra zakonitog sina Ante Hercega i Ive rođene toj iz Dusine. Thus, he said there's no question. This is the man. This is the identification. You have everything here. That's where he comes from and that's his family. We then drove from the monastery to Prolog. We met all of the family. Brala Lunija se doživio kao uzbilu osobu i vidilo se odmah da pripada u nivodnoj hraći i tako je ubija stav. Došao je s jednim ciljem, jer je poslao ispred unačnih srednjemečkih država, da utvrbi da li je to stvarno, da li se stvarno radi u tom do tog čovjeku. Jer na adresa je bila vrlo jasna, prolog Austrija. Little village of prolog is a very rustic agricultural village, and we met all of the family there. We indeed saw the very home where Peter Tomic was born. We, we met his uh, relatives, we, we met his descendants, and uh, they couldn't have been more happy. They all knew of this award, but none of them knew uh, anything about how to claim it or take whatever action was necessary, etc. And they were delighted with the fact that I was looking into this. Tomic Petra Hrvatski Unate! I što je za mene jako interesantan nasljednik, kako bi kažemo, mi kažemo next of kin, smo ga našli u Splitu. I on je, vi kažete, u vojsku pukovnik. Pola sela je došlo stvarno i ja sam počastio ljude, išli smo u restoran, 
na most i jeli smo, pili, oni su i zapjevali poslije u admirali insistira da, da to kao znak prijateljstva Amerike i Hrvatske i da se to učvrsti. We came back to America with all the documentation. We took all the photographs of uh, everything that we could. We made uh, copies of all the documents. We supplied them all to the Navy. The Navy said this is not sufficient and uh, they, they uh, used every uh, obstruction they could. No way was the Navy willing to uh, agree that the family was really hurt sick. Svaki podatak, svaka nova spoznaja bila je predstavljena na kongresu u američkom od kojega se tražilo da se obnovi proces da je tužno da tako jedno veliko junačko djelo i takva na medalja stoji u muzeju. Kongres je uporno odbivao i i, i svaki novi dokaz je govorio da to još nije dovoljno, nisu pokazivali dobru volju da se ta priča završi. Because of the obstinacy of the United States Navy and the United States government in not wanting to cooperate affirmatively to identify a next of kin, but insistent on keeping custody of this medal, I brought a, a lawsuit that the, the family uh, um, authorized me to bring a, a federal action in, uh, in New York. Mi smo već tužili ili javili jedan put prošli godinu i oni su rekli, no, još je sumljivo. Onda opet mi smo to stavili. Tu je on vodio jednu veliku bitku, čak sa vrhovnim sudom ulozio je puno novaca osobnih. To je ovdje, recimo, nezamislivo na ovom području. U jednom momentu u Americi, kad sam mu ja pričao o nepravdama i nerazumijevanju još uvijek američke vlade i svega, Lani mi tada odgovorio, rekao, znate, ja sam Irac, ja sam katolik. Irci se bore 200 godina u Americi da dokažu anglosaksonskoj, engleskoj Americi istinu o Irskoj. I ako vas itko razumije, u ovoj zemlji to vas razumije Irci, to vas ja razumijem. My wife and I have uh, Irish background and we identify to some degree with the way Croatia has sustained itself down through the centuries, uh, maintained its culture, its religion, and its fortitude and its reliance on the strength of its people, which was clearly evidenced by many Croatian Americans who have served in the American military, received the Medal of Honor as well, in addition to Peter Tomic. On je pred jednim najvećim zborom od nekoliko tisuća ljudi, govoreći o Tomiću, spomenio vojnu tradiciju hrvatskog naroda, spomenio je da to, da to je nekako jedan od, od nedirektnih dokaza da je u tradiciji hrvatskog naroda otpo prema otomanskom carstvu junaštvo i povezao je sinsku bitku govoreći kako je sve to iz tog krajeva, kako su Hrvati naučili giniti i raditi junačka djela i da je, da je Tomić pripada kulturi i abijentu i da je to sigurno doprinjelo njegovoj odluci da junački nastupi u Prhavu. Tamo oko 2000. godine opet se malo situacija mijenja. Ja opet ponovno angažiram eh, senatora John Wonera koji se sada iznimno, iznimno aktivno angažira i uvjerava američku vladu da kongres to treba promijeniti. Tako se i dogodilo. Kongres je otvorio vrata da se ponovno može ispitati porijeklo Petra Tomića i počela je vrlo aktivna kampanja koja je bila prisutna u medijima, bila je prisutna u novinama. Sada je bilo pitanje hoće li se u američkim državnim, odnosno institucijama ovaj, e, izboriti, hoće li se gospodin e, kontradmiral Lani izboriti za to da se e, ta medalja konačno uruči e, slijednicima 
rodbinskim slijednicima porodice Herceg. Od 2000. godine je konačno, nakon svih dokumenta koji su od Američkog instituta za ispitivanje obiteljskog povijekla, priznati da je Srečko Herceg, časnik Hrvatske vojske, najbliži nasljednik Petra Tomića. Everything rested there for a while until several years later, I think it was the year 2005, when I got a phone call from the Department of Defense saying uh, uh, that they wished to talk to me about the medal and the presentation of this medal to an next of kin. Kako je sama ta priča po sebi, recimo, humana, ljuska, neovisno što je vojna, bilo je vrlo ugodno slušati koliko je već ljudi, za folići medijama, hvala Bogu, znalo o toj priči i to je već bio prvi moment kad sam se ja nakon svih groznih dezinformacija koje su tada vladale po svijetu, pogotovo u Americi, što je sami znate, već sam se počeo jako ugodno osjećati jer sam nekako već bio ponosan, aha, to je tvoj Hrvat. And I, in a sense, responded to the call from the Pentagon, the Department of Defense, that I wished not to be bothered anymore. I had resourced, exhausted all of my attempts, personal expense, uh, and lawsuit, and travels, and, and otherwise. And uh, I, I chose not to, to be uh, continuing any more disputes with the Navy and confronting them with their failure and refusal to cooperate with ascertaining the true identity of the next kin. Nakon što je Američki institut potvrdio vjernost svih dokumenata koje je gospodin Lani kroz niz dugih godina prikupljao, Kongres nije mogao više protiv toga. I was interrupted by the caller who was calling from the Department of Defense and said, no, excuse me, Mr. Lani, the caller said, he said, we have a direction from the Secretary of Navy to make this presentation. I said, well, on what basis? He said, on the basis of everything you have uh, presented to the Navy. Najprve New York Times napisao jedan veliki članak da je kraj agoniji, i bio je dogovor da će Srećko Erceg doći u Washington. I said, well, have you verified this? Have you checked on it? Have you authenticated any of this? No. We, I said, have you sent someone to prologue as your military attaché confirmed this at the monastery with the records? No, no, no. He said, we are complying exclusively and totally on everything you have presented. And we are prepared to go forward and make the presentation of this Medal of Honor to the man whom you've recommended. And that was the grandson of Ivan Tolonich, and his name was Stretchko Herzog. Ja sam zahtjevao da dođe u vojnome odijelu, to je njegov je danji rođak napravio toliko jedno veliko odijelo, sa što bi se mi sramili hrvatske vojske, da pa će, ja sam zahtjevao nek se vidi ta jedna vojna hrabrost hrvatskog naroda i da Tomić pripada jednoj obitelji koja je dan danas vojno hrabra, odlučna. In the meanwhile, they said they had to vet, to look into the background of uh, Stretchko Tonage, so there would be no embarrassment to the American government in making a presentation to someone who perhaps had a questionable background. This took months. Određene obavještajne strukture u Srbiji su mene etiketirali lažno da sam ratni zločinac i to je se poslije američka služba je to provjerila da nije to istina. And eventually uh, they came up with a clean background on, on Stretchko Tonage and they said that we will make arrangements to have the Vice President of the United States who will be in Croatia to make this presentation to the very man whom you have identified as the appropriate next of kin for the presentation of the medal. I then said, well, this is wonderful. Uh, I said, uh, uh, we will come and I would like to attend. He says, yes, you are specifically invited. Uh, Taj nagrada samo smije predsednik Amerike dati. Niko drugi. On mora to dati. Međutim, predsednik Bush mlađi je tada bio. To mu nije bilo drago. 
Tu nije niko moga utjecati, nije čak mogla utjecati ni veteranska udruga, nisu mogli čak utjecati niti veliki američki povisničar koji se bave povišću drugog svjetskog rata, koji su smatrali da se ne smije napraviti iznimka da pred životom jednog čovjeka ne smiju biti nikakve druge političke niti bilo kakve igre. However, they told me the vice president is unable to stay on for his visit to Croatia and instead we uh, scheduled a presentation aboard the largest American aircraft carrier the USS Enterprise Bush kakav bio takav je bio napravio je nešto što u biti nije ustavno i on je poslao tu ispis pritac celu šestu flotu ali i je bio zahtjev američke vlade da to bude čisto obiteljska stvar da to ne bude hrvatsko američka da ne bude politika uključena s time taj potez je meni dokazao da ono što smo mi svi sumnjali do tada da kongres nije htio dozvoliti da 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 se ta medalja dade jednom hrvatu je to bila ta taj razlog da da se to ne bi povezalo sa sa nekim političkim odnosima tako da na dodjelu medalje Srećku Ercegu je bila isključivo obitelj i nešto malo novinara, isključivo prijatelji, nas je bilo vrlo malo i niko nije bio od, od političkih institucija. We made a fine presentation on the flight deck of, the, of this carrier on one of the most beautiful days I can imagine off the Dalmatian coast with the background of split Croatia with the sun shining and uh, the waves splashing against the hull vrlo svečano to je bilo napravljeno na najvećem vojnom uh, vojnom nivou koje koji postoji u vitalu američke vojske to je čak bilo jako i divljivo the bands were playing the croatian national anthem and the american national anthem and with huge crowd and then a reception on the hangar deck which is just below the flight deck and it was a marvelous day and a great day for us having accomplished this mission a bilo je na najveću razni za slani presnika buša za pojedni svi pomorski snaga za Europu Heli Orvić je mene osobno uručio to odlikovanje u pratnji nekoliko njihovih admirala i generala i to je emotivno, to je posebno. Ja to nikad nisam doživio, nije niko od nas vojnika u Hrvatskoj doživio. Sjedine američke države cijene svoje ljude u vojnoj Hrvatski, kako častnike, tako i dočastnike. A posebno žrtvu. To smo vidjeli iz njihove priče. On je radio kod Lonc, pa kod Petra. Ali kad napraviš jedno dijelo, humoru, on dobije isto najveće priznanje. Bez odbira što se radi po hirarhiji na najnižem. It's a tradition uh, that the President of the United States salutes the Medal of Honor recipients. It's also true that um, Harry Truman said to a recipient around whose neck he was placing the ribbon, he said, I would give you my job as President in exchange for your medal. Leadership by example perhaps comes essentially from our Christian faith uh, because uh, we are taught to be examples in our own uh, culture in our own neighborhood Asmatran taj čin posebno hrabrim stoga jer je Peter Tomić zapravo u trenutku oglašavanja opće evakuacije već bio izašao iz stranice bio već na palubi i umjesto da spasi svoj život kao i svi drugi članovi posade na tom brodu on se a možda i jedini vratio nazad na svoj položaj i do trenutka svoje smrti obavljaju svoju dužnost. That leadership is such that I was never sat down nor taught 
leadership. But when you see people like Peter Tomich in doing what he did, he was a true leader. We emphasize that with our training here about being chiefs, about being leaders, sacrificing yourself for your sailors, for the mission, for the Navy. I find it interesting that the uh, school that was established for the Senior Enlisted Academy in Newport, Rhode Island by the United States Navy has a motto, leadership by example. Daily with our lessons and, and bringing the students here away from their homes, away from their families and getting them in the building and training and teaching those values and emphasizing those values is something we pride ourselves on uh, as the Navy's only schoolhouse that has a building for leadership. The significance of that is when this boat is operational, it is taking all those 1.8 million visitors that come to the Arizona Memorial every year. When the Peter Tomich is on the water on a daily basis, she's taking thousands of visitors out to the USS Arizona. So Peter Tomich, his legacy is carried on beyond just the USS Utah, but really all of those who visit Pearl Harbor and what happened that morning on December 7th, 1941 by Tomich going out to the memorial on a daily basis, his legacy is really carried beyond just the Utah. It's really all of those. His legacy is being used to tell the story of what happened on December 7th, 1941, for all those who lost their lives that day.